Today I'll be reviewing Fedora 42 as they've completely changed things around with the installer and it's a greatly welcomed update. 42 is the latest release here. It's your operating system and we're going to be checking out all of the significant updates including desktop experiences and tools and I want to jump right into the installer as it's seen a major overhaul. For those of you unaware, this is what the old installer looked like. It was a bit cumbersome as you had to go in and out of the main page in order to set things, which in my world was a little unintuitive. Most Linux distributions at this point with their installer just take you through a step-by-step -step process, advancing you by hitting the next button instead of having to go between pages and awkwardly having to click on things and hit done when you're finished. That was on the KDE Plasma version, which we're gonna be talking about a little bit later. Some fantastic news for that spin. Well, is it a spin anymore? We'll be talking about that. Anyways, here's the new installer for Fedora Linux Workstation Edition 42. This one is much more intuitive in my opinion. As you select the language and have very easy installation methods, you just click next to run through things, including if you want your data encrypted, and that's really it. I just ran through the entire install process with four steps, and it's exactly what I wanted and needed. You can also get into a manual installation if you want, but this makes things so much easier. The installation has now begun. It's gonna configure the storage, install the software, update the system configuration, and finally, let me reboot into the new Fedora Linux 42. Now, some things I wanna talk about with this new installer. It is actually a web-based UI. It's called the Anaconda installer and it has been overhauled with the new web-based interface. It has guided partitioning with customizable options as we would all expect. You can also reinstall Fedora for easy system recovery with this new installer and it has more improved support for dual boot configurations, which is all great. A lot of us are aware that Fedora offers alternative desktop experiences for users, depending on what desktop they enjoy. Fedora XFCE, Fedora Cinnamon, Fedora Mate, i3, LXQ, and more. One spin that they've added in and I'm excited to use is the Fedora Linux with the Cosmic Desktop Environment. You no longer have to install things on your own once you have Fedora going. Instead, there's a Cosmic Spin now. For those of you wanting to test the Cosmic Desktop Environment, albeit it's still in the beta, you can now get started using this Cosmic Spin. Fantastic as this new Rust-based Linux desktop is awesome to use even though it's in beta. If you enjoy videos like this, make sure to subscribe below because YouTube can get finicky and you wouldn't want to miss another video. Also smash that like button on the way up. Big news when it comes to KDE on Fedora, it is now an official edition. No longer is it a spin, it's available for download directly as what they call the next generation personal desktop. They're showcasing it beautifully here. And now when you go under Get Fedora, you have the Workstation Edition and the KDE Plasma Edition. They were hinting at this through various different announcements over the last few months, but it's official. We have a KDE Plasma Edition. Surprisingly, it's not under the Workstation Edition that still has the fully featured GNOME desktop, which there was mention that they would potentially have two editions under the workstation. It looks like KD Plasma is its own edition here, which is completely fine for me as it is plastered directly as one of the first options for the variants of Fedora Linux now. We're gonna be checking out KD Plasma in a moment, but let's get back to the default GNOME desktop so we can talk about all the new GNOME 48 improvements. And once we have a fresh installation of Fedora Linux 42 workstation, here's a default GNOME desktop environment where we have an official tour and welcome Simple suggestions like using the powerful search engine, staying organized with workspaces, knowing that you can swipe up and down and use various different touch gestures, and that we can get started using Fedora. Now, the big things under the hood here are not necessarily enhancements to Fedora 42, more than their enhancements with GNOME 48, as GNOME brings major improvements to the user, including a whole new app called Wellbeing. If you search for well-being, it's gonna be in your settings. Take a moment and set this up if you're new to Fedora as it will let you know how much time you're taking on your computer. The well-being app is new with GNOME 48 and it includes things like time tracking, break reminders, and a customizable break schedule. You can set your screen time limits by simply toggling things on, setting the amount of hours, and setting what happens, including making the screen grayscale. It's fantastic to understand what all is going on. You can also just completely shut things down by disabling the screen time up at the top. 
and this will not track any of the time that is used on the screen. Now understand that this data is never shared outside of this device. In case you're worried about sharing your time, you're not gonna share your time. Another big deal for GNOME 48 here with Fedora is that we now have dynamic triple buffering. This means that we have smoother animations, especially on older hardware, where things launch and go through as you swipe and use things. As you just move applications around, it should get smoother if you're using the latest GNOME 48 on Fedora 42. We also have stack notifications and groups and a better layout overall whenever you open up your apps. These are more succinct now. They show up more compact so that you can get more applications previewed. GNOME 48 has really done a great job giving us all sorts of improvements. I do want to run through just a few things because GNOME 48 brought so many changes. It's called Bengaluru. And one thing is the notification stacking, as you can see here, there's plenty of notifications all grouped together under Fractal, for example, there was screenshot as well. And it just shows how the user can now open or close those stack notifications. Very nice to use, especially if you get a lot of notifications. There's been performance improvements, which we've already talked about briefly, including that dynamic triple buffering, but more optimizations, of course, including GNOME's JavaScript engine has seen reduced CPU and memory usage for many common operations. They've also enhanced their image viewer. You now have features like cropping, rotating, and flipping images, and just new compatibility overall with this screenshot tool. Of course, they focus on that well-being app. You can see in this preview picture that they've populated some times. For example, how long they've used the system in the last week and what their averages are. But a massive one is the high dynamic range support. For those users using Fedora 42 with GNOME 48, it's an important milestone, as they mentioned here, as it introduces the initial system level HDR support. This means that if you have an HDR display, you can now have HDR output shown from apps which support it. They're continuing to develop HDR supported hardware, and it's very cool to finally see this setting that you can actually turn it on and off with GNOME 48. So at the very least, if you're thinking about upgrading from 41 to 42, if, if you have a HDR supported display, this might be a big reason to upgrade to 42. Back to the desktop experience, not much else has changed here, but it's a very welcomed upgrade. Fedora is one of my favorite Linux distributions. I use it personally with the Cosmic Desktop Spin and I have a great time with it. And they do mention a last minute warning. If you're dual booting, with a different operating system, or if you're just running the live image and not intending to actually install, which is that the Fedora 42 Live Media adds a Fedora entry to the UEFI boot menu, which kind of sucks, but just be aware that these are the affected live images currently. The team is aware of it, but I did want to make note of that issue. As we're now going to log in with our KD Plasma version, we're going to be checking out the hardware usage here as well on both the KD Plasma and GNOME 48 version, so stick around. We're just gonna briefly go through what it looks like to be welcomed into a brand new installed KD Plasma desktop on Fedora 42. We're welcomed by the Welcome Center just like we were in GNOME. A little bit more options and setup that you can select. I do like the fractional scaling better here in KDE. It lets me fine tune it ever so slightly. For those of you who like a modern desktop experience, both KDE Plasma and GNOME 48 are great. I do like the look and feel of GNOME a little more, but I like the utility of Fedora KDE. So I've actually been using that one over GNOME and it's extremely exciting to now see it as an official addition instead of a spin or kind of like an afterthought. We now know that the Fedora team is highly focused on giving us a great experience and staying on top of their KDE Plasma build. All the KDE Plasma users should rejoice at this point but there's not much to show off here unless you want me to get into a desktop review of KDE Plasma. I have plenty of those, so check out a different video for that. But what I'm interested in is the hardware resource usage here in both versions. We're going to first start with KDE Plasma and what it looks like because I just booted that up. So we'll first use HTOP to see things here. Right now, the memory usage is 2.45 gigs out of 7.7 .7 on KDE Plasma. This is with 128 tasks running 375 threads, 117 kernel threads, and we've been up for about five minutes. The CPU usage goes somewhere between zero and 5% for the most part, and we're not using any swap space. 
Overall, this is pretty heavy for a desktop environment. 2.45 gigs, I believe we're gonna see a lot less with GNOME 48. Nonetheless, let's check out system information. When it comes to about the system, we have Fedora Linux 42 installed with KD Plasma version 6.3. The kernel version here is 6.14 and it's using Wayland as the default display server. This is being emulated on an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X processor with around eight gigs of RAM available. Again, 2.45 is being used by the desktop environment itself. Also installing updates is super easy with Fedora. As soon as you restart things, which you can also turn this off, they'll install your updates for you. They walk you through the process very easily. I've always admired the way that they do this as it's not as intuitive on other systems, even on Ubuntu, for example, where sometimes you can lose track of which updates you're on because you lose track of the messages that have been sent to you and whether you've completely ignored them. All right, back in GNOME 48, we're gonna be also checking out the resource usage here. Using HTAB, we can see that we have around 1.56 gigs used out of eight gigs of memory for the desktop environment. We have the CPU going between somewhere zero to 3%. And right now we have 137 tasks, 428 threads, and 129 kernel threads. And we've been up for around two minutes. No swap space being used on this one. So this is actually significantly lower than what we saw over on the KD Plasma desktop, almost a gig less. Nonetheless, we'll continue on to look at the system information. This time I'll just use FastFetch to find things as this is Fedora Linux 42. We're using the Linux 6.14 kernel. This is on the desktop GNOME 48 using the Iowata theme being emulated on an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X series processor. Our memory usage has gone up a little bit as we're using 23% of the total memory with around 1.8 gigs now. That's probably because some background processes got started, but regardless, pretty lean for this modern desktop experience on GNOME 48. Lots of new updates to Fedora 42. I'm super excited to use it. I've already updated my Fedora systems. Let me know what you think about all the updates. Are you excited for the new KD Plasma Official Edition? Let me know in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe below. You've made it to the end of the video. You're a true fan. Make sure to smash that like button as well. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to SavvyNick.com now and get access to these sheets.